Welcome to this second episode of Trigonometry, Tutorial 8, Trigonometric Functions. Our main recollection is that sine of a plus b, we left this unproved, but we, we will do this at some point, is sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. And similarly, the cosine of the two angles is cos cos minus sine sine. Okay, so primarily today's mini lecture will be examples. Um, being able to solve equations. The first one Find x such that 2x squared, oh, 2 sine x squared plus sine x minus 1 equals 0. And we're going to pick one period, or very slightly more than one period. My real-time sketching is only able to be so good. So we can factorize or complete the square. And I'm just going to factorize it because it's a little bit simpler this way. And uh, if you have two products, either one can be zero. <coughs> so if we just look at the first case, sine x equals one, uh, one half or minus one, we see that we have two possible values, and the minus one gives us one possible value in the period zero to two pi. So if I wanted all the solutions, you can just add on multiples of 2n pi. This is often written as z for the uh, all the integers. So example two, which in class I gave or will give you to do. Very similarly, we can solve two sine squared x plus three sine x plus one equals zero. Again for, it is important to specify the range. So this time sine x is minus a half, and so we want the uh, third and fourth quadrants. So more complicated examples. Uh, we're going to use our multiple angle formulas. For instance, suppose we wanted to solve
For simplicity, I'm going to just pick this range. You can pick different ranges. This left-hand side is 2 sine x cos x. And so we could rearrange, take the cos x out of the bracket, 2 sine x minus 1. And so this bit gives cos x equals 0, or sine x is a half, i.e. So x is equal to pi by 2, or 3 pi by 2, or pi by 6, or 5 pi by 6. There is an alternative method, which is to graph. You might not find the solutions, but you get an idea for what possible values they are. So if you do sine 2x, so that goes twice as fast. Let me see if I can do this in uh Oh, that's a good effort. Um, so sine 2x is equal to cos x. Something like this. And so you can see that at pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2, we have these two. And there is also the one at uh, pi by 6 and 5 pi by 6. Pretty good diagram. I probably should use different colors, but uh, you'll, 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 give me, you'll let, me go, let me go by with this one. So uh, a slightly more complicated example is the following. So that was example three, so this would be example four. Try and solve sine x plus root 3 cos x is equal to root 2. As a tip, you can still use GeoGebra to plot things. And I'm going to pick, for simplicity, say for the range minus pi less than x less than 2 to 1 pi. What we want to consider is when you plug this into GeoGebra, you see that the sum, these are the sum of two, two waves. And it's another wave with an amplitude, r, and, and a phase shift. So you can say that it's equal to r sine x plus alpha. This is the amplitude. And, well, either alpha or minus alpha, this is the phase. And so if you expand this one, you pick the one that gives you the, the nice signs. Uh, that's a pun there, a sign as an S-I-G-N. R sine alpha sine x cos alpha plus R cos x sine alpha. And we start identifying terms. So what we want is that the coefficients to match. So root 3 becomes r sine alpha, and this 1 becomes r cos alpha. And what does this obtain? This implies that because if I take the square of both sides, I get r squared sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha is equal to root 3 squared plus 1 squared is equal to um, 4. If you like, r sine alpha and r cos alpha are the y and x coordinates of this right angle triangle. So it's an amplitude shift, you know, it's an amplitude, it's a stretch, R is the stretch. If I divide the this, this sign by the cos, I obtain that the tan tangent of alpha is equal to root 3. 
So what we have is that um, this triangle in this particular case is the 2, 3, 1 triangle and alpha is just um, pi by 3. This is in the uh, first quadrant. So what does that give us? If our original formula was this one, and therefore we can write equivalently that r sine x plus alpha, which is 2 sine x plus pi by 3, is equal to root 2. Therefore, sine of x plus pi by 3 is equal to 1 over root 2, divided by 2 on both sides. And here, we wanted x in the range minus pi to pi, carefully chosen, and therefore, um, we know there should be two solutions. So here we have that x plus pi by 3. The reason it's known as a phase is because it's off by this pi by 3 or minus pi by 3. So the sine inverse has two possible options. It's uh, pi by 4 or 3 pi by 4. So pi by minus pi by 12 is pi by 4 minus pi by 3, and 5 pi by 12 is the other one, 3 pi by 4 minus pi by 3. So remember, if you're watching these, you can always take breaks, pause it, but uh, here's the last example. I think that's example 5. Find x such that sine x plus sine of x plus x over 2 is equal to 0. And we're going to go back to this range. One method is at least to sketch the possible solution. Draw sine x. And the other one is to sketch um, sine x over 2. Oh, minus sine x over 2. You see that there's, there should be three solutions in this range. Sorry for the blip. And you could use sine of x is equal to sine of 2 times x over 2. So that's the double angle formula for the sine. Or we're going to use something a little bit different. So way from the beginning, we had that sine of a plus b is sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. And so that sine of a minus b is sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. So that if I take, in this case, we wanted plus the plus sign. So here, secretly, x is going to be a plus b, and a minus b is going to be x over 2, or something like that. This implies that if I add the 2, the, this latter two terms cancel. And relabeling, re we call this P, and this Q. So A plus B is P, and A minus B is Q. So if I add them and divide by 2, I get that A is P plus Q over 2. And B is the other one. If, you, if I subtract the second from the first, it's P minus Q over 2. 
this obtains that the, an alternative to the double angle formula is the sine p plus sine q is 2 sine, and I plug these in. So here, as promised, we wanted sine x plus sine x over 2, so that says that p is equal to x and q is equal to x over 2. I could pick, you can pick the other way around if you like, uh, it's symmetric in P and Q. Just adding the 2 divided by 2, um, I get 3x over 2 divided by 2 for 3x over 4, and taking the difference divided by 2, I get x over 4. So our original equation had that this is equal to zero. And so therefore we have that this one gives that x has to be zero or four pi by three. Because if I multiply three quarters by four pi by three, I get pi. And this one gives x is equal to two pi. Because I need that cosine of something equals zero means that cos of that thing had to be uh, the thing had to be pi by two. And you can see that these correspond to the three points that we had here, and we worked out this value here was four pi by three.